Captain's log, date, January 2nd, 1940. This is my first entry as captain of the V-12. This proud gunboat destroyer is one of the 75 destroyers the German Navy now has. The Admiralty has decided that in order to win the war, the German Navy is to have a massive fleet of destroyers. This will allow us to strike anywhere and show the German flag everywhere. Having such a large navy meant, however, that the Naval Academy could not keep up with training new officers. Our destroyer fleet is commanded by officers who are just out of training. Most of them are second lieutenants. The entire fleet is very inexperienced. All I can do is my level best to execute my orders and to cause as much damage to the Royal Navy as possible. We might not have the biggest guns, but we certainly have the largest number of ships. Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to a new Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts campaign. This one is going to revolve all around the destroyers. Can I make a campaign and win one where I only have destroyers? Let's see. Here we are. Interestingly, the British only have two battleships and two battle cruisers. Normally they have somewhere in the region of four to five battleships and maybe two to three battle cruisers. So they currently cannot project a whole lot of power. That's interesting. Now, I'm going to go with a couple of different classes of destroyer and hope that that way they're going to be all um, useful for different roles. I'm going to mostly use the destroyer leader because it gives me the most room. And when it comes to speed, I'm going to maximize, sorry, I'm going to uh, standardize the speed, not maximize, standardize the speed on all of them and make sure that they're able to keep formation. Because something that I really dislike is when ships have different speeds. It just makes it very difficult to figure out what the right speed is for the right unit. Okay, uh, this first one's going to be a gunboat. And let's see, um, base accuracy is going to be very important for this class. This tower is 73 tons, this is 120. I'm actually considering using this one, because these little platforms, if I'm not mistaken... Oh, actually, no, you can use those for guns. Okay. So you're going to be useful for hunting down light cruisers and getting rid of enemy destroyers. That's the plan. Aiming speed, 13. Aiming speed, 10. Aiming speed, 5. Yeah, right. Okay, we're going to put this here. Firepower. Dual barrel, 5 inches. Just a lot of them. Really? Dual barrel, 5 inches. 1, 2, 3, 4... We're going to have to probably throw a barbette on here. Five. There we go. Six. So that's 12 barrels. And I first have to do some other stuff before I forget. Gas turbines make these things really expensive. Like from gear turbines, that basically doubled the price. I'm still not exactly sold on the idea of a gas turbine. Yes, it gives you more acceleration. The diesels give you less, but maybe just the gear turbines as a sort of middle ground option, considering they also give nice acceleration and more ship repairs for engines, would be the better option. Angled funnel in the middle of the ship. Status, not good enough. There we go. Okay, um, these guys need to be pretty agile. To make sure that they can dodge shells and torpedoes, notably torpedoes. Let's give them sonar and stereoscopic rangefinders. I don't really consider flash fires to be the biggest concern to these ships. They're probably going to blow up anyway. Might as well make it look good. Generation 2 radio, uh, sorry, radar. Um... I think RDF gives you the ability to detect convoys better. So let's use that. Put a quan uh, quintuple, no, quadruple torpedo launcher up there. And these are going to be mostly against ships that we cannot hit with guns for m enough damage. We're going to go with super heavy high explosive shells to deal as much damage to an enemy class, whatever it is that I'm fighting, as possible. Um, auto loading. Electric torpedoes, because anything else they just detect. 21-inch torpedo. 
I might need to swap these things around. Otherwise, oh, we're still too heavy on the bow. What if I put you there? Is that going to make this better? Yeah, that just about balances it. It's interesting that the game allows this. So broadside, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turrets. Seven turrets, that's 14 guns. If I were to go from dual to triple, that's 15 tons extra. I suppose I can make that work, right? I know it messes with the accuracy a little bit, but I'm just making up for that by putting out a lot of fire. I'm still very heavy on the bows. 14%? Do I need to toss this thing on the stern? Quintuple on the stern? Wow, still? I guess those things are heavier than I thought. Um, make the torpedo tubes bigger. Even that's not going to fix it. That's pretty sad. I think this is the best situation for a torpedo launcher. It's just got far the best um, line of fire. 24% is really not good. Okay, this weighs 55 tons, this weighs 163 tons. If I put another torpedo launcher up there... 15. Okay. 12. And then small on this one? No. Okay, we're gonna make the torps bigger again. All right, here we are. I have finished the first class. It's going to have Krupp 4 armor, but that armor is on a destroyer, not that good. 1.5 inch main belt, 1.24, 1.2 aft, 1 inch superstructure, which is pretty good. The torpedo launcher is situated on the stern. I just couldn't otherwise very well balance out the ship. It's not a very good position because its firing arc is pretty bad, but it could be a weapon that I throw out when I'm moving away from the target. As far as firepower, this thing has a lot. It can get that firepower to the target in um, a very short amount of time, in 37 knots. And these guns, 21 of them, which is more than a light cruiser usually has, can fire out to 11 kilometers and reload every 10 seconds. That is the first class. On to the next. Uh, no, that's not a battleship. We're going to go right to the hull type and go with a destroyer leader. This one is going to be the hunter of capital ships. I'm going to go with the maximum range to intercept as many targets as possible, gear turbines, and my hope is that since I'm going to be building a lot of these things, that they'll... Uh, actually, I don't need that much. That they'll sort of complement each other, and you're going to have some sections of larger ships, some or of uh, the capital ship hunters, and some of the smaller units. Let's go for an AUX-3, shaft-3, electric steering. Range finder is not that important here, but they generally don't cost you a whole lot. The secondary tower um, is not that important on this ship. This is 56,000, this is 230,000. So it really adds up, especially if you build not five, but about more like 50 of these things. Let's go with a funnel. I found that this is good enough. We're going to have these things with uh, four inch triples. And they will be capable of defending themselves against, well, mostly everything. Just not necessarily as good. Because these are the hunters of capital ships. To that end, they'll have torpedo launchers. And ideally, a good number of them. And if I put those elevated, they get the best firing arc. The more that you spread these out across the ship, the better it seems to be for how many torpedoes you get in a spread. 
Jeez, this thing is still so heavy. You just move the bridge here. Put a torpedo launcher there. Still doesn't quite work out the way that I would like it. 23 inch. I'm considering giving them oxygen torpedoes because the electrics, they don't run necessarily far enough. They run 13 kilometers. So let's give them oxygen torpedoes for a 50% range. But the problem is they'll probably get detected. And that's going to get me into trouble, I suppose. Because if they get detected, it means they'll not be as effective. Even a larger spread will get detected and probably swiftly annihilated. That is still too heavy. Eight percent aft weight offset. Three eight. Zero seven. There we go. Fixed. Done. Okay. Um, we're gonna give you some better turret rotation, auto loaders. No, not auto loaders. Enhanced loaders. And as for the rest, I don't think we need that much specific stuff on this ship. It's just going to try and stay at maximum range and torpedo stuff into oblivion. It can do the torpedo launch every 1500 seconds, so that's a little under half an hour. They carry 10 torpedoes per launcher, which means that this ship carries 20 torpedo launchers in one, or sorry, 20 torpedoes in one salvo, and can fire two salvos. That ought to be sufficient. That ought to be sufficient. A radar is nice, but pretty heavy. Acoustics is mandatory. I guess I'm going to have to scave off some of the reload. So 4 inch reloads in 12.9 seconds as opposed to what I would like. Uh, it's not that bad. And that doesn't impact the launcher either. Let's see. The fore belt, aft belt, it's all pretty balanced. Uh, can we shift this back? We shift the main tower back. Oh, one. There we go. Alright, so that's our hunter. Um, and then maybe just a, a generalized destroyer. Something not too expensive. That's a sort of half and half design. Advanced tower. Actually, let's go with a smaller hull. Maybe just a destroyer standard. Because they do have all sorts of interesting hull designs. Secondary tower, I'm going to go with the advanced one to improve the chance that I hit stuff. Um, let's make it a 3-inch destroyer. Why not? It's going to be the bane of convoys, if it can detect them. You're going to do 37 knots, you're going to go everywhere. And this, by the way, is important uh, because it allows you to catch convoys, usually. We will have to set up a funnel. Is that going to make your engine happy? It is. Even with natural boilers, damn. Aux 3, shaft 3, radar 2, acoustic sonar 2, coincidence 5, I guess? Oh, and I still need to make room for a torpedo launcher somewhere. Just a Quinn. You know what? I'm going to go with the five inches. I think it just makes more sense. This is going to be a Fletcher-esque design. It's just that the hull type is not quite right. Ah, oh, come on. I cannot make it bigger either. It really doesn't like to have another gun on the stern. Really doesn't want to. Unless I give it a smaller secondary tower, perhaps. Like this. There you go. Now we just have a very high four weight offset. That can be pretty quickly counteracted like that. There. Alright, Fletcher. Welcome to the fleet. Uh, it's going to be a constant battle, probably, to figure out what sort of ship this is. What sort of unit am I using this time around? Barbat 2, 
Unbalanced rudder, electric steering. 3.2, we're a little heavy. Let's try and give these guys as much protection as possible. Especially on the guns, conning tower. 23% four weight offset. Oh, well, it's because of the superstructure, isn't it? This is not the conning tower. Oh, the belt. There you go, the belt. Um, four weight of stats, still a little high. If this thing has some weight offset, then so be it. There we go, that's fine. Let's try and give these slightly bigger torps. Firing arc is not great. There. Um, aft deck reduce. Yeah, this will have to do. This will have to do. It's not a stellar ship, but it'll do the job. Okay. Now, I have money. Kajit has wares if you have coin. And I have 1.9 billion in coin. So let's get the fleet built. This is the gunboat, the DDV-1. I would like to order 20 of those. Cha-ching. Uh, you are all going to be sea controlling. There. Select port. Hamburg. Hamburg is nice this time of year. Next. The V2. That's the torpedo destroyer. I'd like to order 20 of those. And we're going to sea control with these from... Uh, Not really sure if this is the right type, but I think it is. Yeah, these guys. Okay, uh, you're going to go to Wilhelmshaven. And then we're going to have the general ships, the V3s. How many can I order safely? Not that many. I am expecting to get blockaded, so I'm not going to spend everything. I'll build 35 destroyers of the V3 class and put all of these in sea control. And thereby, I'll not project a whole lot of power, but I do hope that I'll be able to get a whole bunch of counter, uh, yeah, encounters with ships early on, so that I'm able to get those capital ships killed off before they become too much of a threat. Crew training, monthly balances of one. <laughs> really? Nah, I doubt that. Start. There we go, plus 13 million. Interestingly, I'm not even blockaded yet. Not yet. How much can I... S no, that's not really what I want. As opposed to what I normally do, I'm going to focus on things that I actually find useful, like hull strengthening. It's going to give you a little bit more stability. And torpedo size is probably also going to be useful. I think that's the 24-inch torpedo. All right, let's see if we can find the Brits. I feel that early on I have the tech advantage, or rather I have the crew advantage, because secondaries, primary guns, they all become stronger later on in the campaign, because the crew gets more involved, they get more accurate, they get trained. When that happens, the secondaries will kill me at a very high pace. Maybe with the exception of the, the hunters, if you will. Now they do have 29 light cruisers, so I have my work cut out for me here. And there is the blockade. Good lord, a minus 30 million? That's a bit much. Maybe not do any research today. This is fine. Convoy, yours or mine? Yours. Uh, we're going to hunt these things down and sink the Rodney, ideally. If these are the right classes of destroyer. Let's see. The V-36. And the V-24. Sadly, these things don't have any particular names that'll make them very distinguishable. Oh, they're both capital ship hunters. That's all the better, actually. Because that means that I can hunt down the convoy and the battle cruiser. Ideally. Let's go. Sink the transports. 
kill off the battlecruiser. If I can sink one of their four capital ships early, that would be a huge blow to the Brits, and especially their power projection. Now what I don't get is that these ships have radar. Yes, it's only generation one. But how is a cargo ship spotting me before I spot it? That is something that I don't quite understand. It's a cargo ship that's probably not even equipped with radar. And yet, and yet, they are capable of spotting me. That makes, at least to me, pretty little sense. Ah, long range fire coming in. Is that your battlecruiser? Yes. Show me. 10, 14 inches. Thing looks intimidating. It has a triple eight. 16 6 inch guns, 33 inchers? Wow. I'm not too concerned about the 3 inchers. I would rather stay outside a range of them, of course. But it's the 6 and the 8s that I think will be problematic. The 14s. The 14s can one shot me if they get the shot off and actually hit. But my destroyers are fast and pretty small. So they're not that likely to get hit. At least that's my current theory. The tactic here will be to get rid of these transports early. Making sure that I get no longer detected. Because I very much hope that I can detect the battlecruiser before they detect me. And that means I can go on the offensive with the torpedoes. Potentially from two different angles, considering I have two different destroyers. Let's smoke up. Make sure I'm harder to hit. Although it appears that none of these transports are actually packing. I have the advanced hydraulic torpedo turret. Sorry, advanced hydraulic turrets on these, so that helps. Because I'm thinking I might need to go starboard with about a 90 degree turn and thereby shield the destroyers using the transports, but that means also I have to throw the turrets around. Let's go. Close Sesame. Sesame doesn't want to sink. Now she does. Alright, target Prometheus. Make sure we get rid of that ship. She seems to be getting away. Ooh, that battle cruise is getting close. And she hit me with a six inch gun. Yeah, I thought that that was gonna be the the death of me. Uh, I need to first do more identification on this battle cruiser before I drop 20 torpedoes at it and find out that it doesn't work. Because of a turning circle, for example. V-24 took a pretty big blow from a 14-inch high-explosive shell. 96% ID. Yeah, if I launch torpedoes now, it's way too predictable and everybody's going to signal back to the Rodney that there are torpedoes in the water. 441 turning circle on a battlecruiser? That's really good. Sonar 1. Considering the size of these torpedoes, that's probably going to be an issue. Because they will get detected. They have less visibility, but not that little. Get rid of the Prometheus, and then we're going to hunt down these two strays here. Maybe the Albatross. Because I need to sink 100%. And I might not have that many opportunities to get rid of these transports. Get rid of Britain's naval capacity or merchant capacity. So let's make it quick. We probably have the guns trained on the Pandora, or we can have them trained on the Pandora pretty quick. We only got those three turrets. If this was a gunboat attack, this would have gone very different. I also saw the Rodney launch a torpedo at me. I would be very interested to know <laughs> what the odds are 
that that single underwater torpedo tube is going to actually cause damage to their own. Damage to the transports. Because I entirely see that happening. And she stopped firing. That's interesting. Well, if she wants to cease fire, that's fine. Giving me my, uh, my destroyers more time to work. Hood. <laughs> oh, really? You got demoted there, didn't you? Hood. Shh. Go on. Sink it already. How many bulkheads does that battlecruiser have? Few. Torpedo blister? Two. Okay. Oh, sorry, no. Um, Anti-Torp 3. Anti-Flood 2, that's what I was looking at. Anti-Flood. Okay. Oh, you fired again. Why would you go and do a thing like that? Was this thing just turning back and forth too much? Yeah, that's what it's doing. The Rodney is doing too many circles. And thereby she's making it very difficult for her own guns to maintain a target lock. Because she's constantly turning faster than her guns are. That's her problem. Okay. That's fair. Come on. What's the range in those six? Twelve. And this one's sixteen. Yikes. Thing will probably sink. Switch target to the rainbow. We first need to complete our mission, because even if I lose the destroyers, I will still get some victory points out of it. And considering the way that this campaign is going to go, I will probably be blockaded the whole time, because I'm only using destroyers, which I would say actually project a whole lot more power than a battlecruiser does. I mean... They have two battlecruisers and two uh, battleships. I have 75 destroyers. I can project a lot more. I can be basically everywhere on the map with at least one destroyer. Go on. That's that one. So that means the albatross... The Glowworm and the already crippled Prometheus are still alive. The Rodney is still operating 10 clicks out. 20% buoyancy, 10... you're probably dead. Switching fire to Glowworm. And then we'll just have to torp and back out. Because I'm hoping that once this thing is dead, they'll lose line of sight. Because I'm just a small target. The V24's engine is not getting fixed because the compartment's flooded. Shit. Okay, turn. Still got one more to kill. And then the big guy. Rodney. Rodney again is not... There she is. Now she's firing. 8 kilometers out. You know what? We're going to torp it. We're just going to torp it. I know I'm torping with two DDs from basically the same angle, but because of the range, I'm hoping that's going to be a sort of a crossfire. Ish. Or that these will intersect at the point where the Rodney is also going to be. You need to be very careful not to turn too much. Because the Rodney will change direction to follow. I can't have that. Mission accomplished. That's great, but... There is still the small issue of a 30 sorry, 34,000 ton battlecruiser here. She detected the torps. Whoa, at two kilometer range. Okay, that means that we're leaving. Look at that thing. <laughs> this was pointless. This is gonna be a concern. That is gonna be a big concern. 
See if I can limp away from the battle. At 15 knots. It took some doing, but I was able to get the V24 and the V36 out of the battle. For a mere 71 victory points. Transports apparently are not worth an awful lot. Sadly. Uh, the battlecruiser escaped completely unharmed. The same, however, cannot be said for my destroyers. Now, take note of the maintenance cost of a destroyer here. Uh, one battlecruiser like this is going to set you back 5.7 million a month. Which means that I can afford to about four of these. About four of the, uh, the torpedo destroyer. For one battlecruiser. It's going to be a, an interesting campaign, this one. Anyway, that's the first battle. Uh, let me see. Did I have... Yeah, I got everyone in sea control. Okay, and they're... Well, they're pretty spread out. So that means that I can have encounters basically everywhere. Fixing a destroyer is a whole different ball game when it comes to repairs. Uh, when it comes to maintenance. I mean, 1.4 million, 5.3 million. I cannot have these things probably be fixed for more than two months. Hopefully they won't. Anyway, that's it for this video. I hope you guys are going to be interested in this new campaign. Uh, I'm hoping to get more encounters with the big ships early. Oh, they just finished new battleship. Uh, that's going to be interesting. Okay, well, let's hope that I can hunt it down and kill it in one of the next episodes. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy, and I'll see you soon for the next one.